So now our comb is allowed to dry. As you can see tapping it, there's no excess reagent that comes off. Our color is fixed, so we're able to read the comb. Using a straight edge, I'll look at the first row of dots, and that is our control slot. So this is the po positive reference range. They should all be a similar color. Using the comb scale provided in the kit, I will try and match this positive reference. I now have set my positive control. The positive control is valued at 3. I will now compare all of my samples to that positive control reference color and gauge the color development and what um, results are positive and the value. So again, the first row of dots is the positive control. Using my straight edge, I'm going to look at the second row of dots. This row represents the antibody present for canine adenovirus. We'll now use a paper and a pen to record my results. For sample one, loaded in tooth number one, you can see I have a very dark color development. A higher number would correspond to that darker development, so I will call this a six. There is a high level of antibody present within this tooth. Looking next, still on canine adenovirus, but on tooth two, my sample two. Again, you can see there's a very dark color development, much darker than the positive reference control. Again, I will call this a six. Moving down, sample three. The color development that is here is slightly darker than my positive control, which I have marked as a three. Gauge that as a four. Sample four, you can see there's a white circle. There's no color development that has taken place. So this sample I would call a zero or a negative. Last, for canine adenovirus, sample five that was loaded on the fifth tooth. Again, there's a high degree of color development, darker than our positive reference. I will call this a 5. I will next use my straight edge to move down to the third row of dots for the color development that is representative of Parvo or CPV2 antibody. So again, we'll start with sample number one, which was loaded in tooth number one. You can see there's a very dark development that has taken place. Comparing it to the positive reference control, again, it's much darker. I will call this a six. Looking for sample two, loaded in the second tooth. Again, we're always comparing to that positive reference control. The sample is very dark, and it looks similar to the result from tooth number one. Again, we will call it a six.
sample 3, the parvo antibody, it's darker than the positive control, but not quite as dark as what we've previously seen. We will call this a 5. Sample 4, again you can see we do have a slight bit of background that's occurring on our tooth, but not enough that we are, are unable to read the samples. You can see there's a white circle present. There's no color development that has taken place. Therefore, we have no parvo antibody present in the sample. So we will call that a zero or a negative. Last sample, sample five. You can see the color development that has taken place is slightly darker than our positive control. Again, our positive control we're measuring at a 3, so we will call this circle a 4. The last results that we have will be for distemper, canine distemper virus, or CDV. These color development spots are located at the bottom of the comb. Again, we're going to proceed reading across the comb as we have in the previous samples. Sample one on tooth number one, we're looking at the bottom dot. Comparing the color development here to the color in our positive reference serum, you can see it's slightly darker than this positive. We'll call this a four. Sample two has a dark color development. Again, comparing it to the positive reference, it's, it's darker than this development here. We'll call this 5. Sample 3, you can see there's no color development. Comparing it to our positive control, the sample is blank, so it will be 0 or negative. Sample 4, comparing it to our positive reference control, there's darker color development that is present. We'll call this sample a 4. Last, sample 5. The two color development spots for our sample for canine distemper virus antibody and the positive reference control look the same. We will call that a 3. As an overview for reading the results on the comb, we use the comb scale to set our positive controlled color development. All of the results from the samples are gauged against this positive control color that we have set. The main focus of the results are to look at samples that are at or beyond, which are considered positive, so at the 3 level and above as the colors darken, are positive samples, or samples that are below or negative are positive setting. So as we went through and read the comb, all of the color developments were gauged against the positive reference control. The results that we have recorded show that there are three samples that are negative for the antibody present. The remaining samples are at a three or above, which show they are positive for the antibody present for adeno, parvo, and distemper. Two of the samples that we have used today were hemolyzed samples. They were loaded in teeth three and four. As you can see, we did experience a higher level of background with hemolyzed samples. However, we were still able to read the results 
on the teeth of that comb. Results from a previous comb where samples were not hemolyzed, you can see we had very clear results with a low amount of background.